Hello, Kenoke Rob here, and I am doing uh, a walkthrough today of my adventure puzzle map, uh, level 10. Um, this is a puzzle map that I have created and put out, um, but I've noticed some people having trouble with it, so this will be a walkthrough guide for those people. Um, right around now, there should be some timestamps going up um, for you to navigate to the particular puzzle um, or part of the game that you are stuck on um, or otherwise you can watch through the this entire video um, to get the full walkthrough experience this will not be a let's play experience it will purely be this is how you solve each puzzle um, and maybe some light uh, kind of easter eggs um, kind of revealed of, from when i was building the map um, before we start i do want to make very clear that there is dialogue um, I have the voice and speech sound setting turned off, um, but I do say in the README file that you get when you download this to make sure that that is turned up um, because all of the guidance that you get uh, is done through dialogue prompts um, and those play under that voice setting. Um, so let's go ahead and move on. Right around now is where, like for example, dialogue would turn on to tell you that you are on level 9, heading down to level 10. Um, but of course, dialogue is turned off and will be for the remainder of this video. So you step in the elevator, it falls and breaks as it's supposed to. Fall damage is turned off, you head down here, and the game has officially started. Um, there are three puzzles here, one, two, and three. Um, and from each, you'll gather an obsidian block to, reach, uh, to rebuild this portal and move on to level 11. So let's go ahead and start with puzzle one, which is the speed puzzle. So when you walk in, the ceiling falls down right there, and you get a prompt that explains to you that you were supposed to follow along this path um, to retrieve an obsidian block at the end. You press the button, and then you follow the path, uh, racing the repeater clock to get to the obsidian block. The trick is that you have to get there, of course, before the repeater block runs down and gets over to here, but you also cannot step off of this pressure plate path or slow down in any way, or you will have to start over. Um, which I will make an example for now. So to start each uh, attempt, you do have to stand on this gold-lined pressure plate and press the button. Sound effect will play, and you start running. Now you see, the obsidian block vanished before I could even see it, so I must have stepped off a pressure plate or slowed down just enough um, that it vanished. So let's go ahead and give it another go. Nope. I'm starting off on a, on the wrong foot here. Um, go. Oh, that was bad. I didn't even sprint. <laughs> um, I do want to make an important note for this. Um, this entire puzzle, for one, is completely just um, skill-based. There's It's a lot of persistence, um, and I recognize that that can be frustrating, but it is probably the most challenging thing here. So if you can do this, you can do anything. Um, let's go ahead and try again. Okay, so you can see the obsidian block floating there, but you see, I just attempted to cheat by cutting across here. I made it, quote-unquote, to the obsidian block, um, but I cheated. I, I stepped off the pressure plate path, um, so the command that actually kills the obsidian block entity actually took priority, um, and I did not succeed. You do have to follow the entire path. You cannot cheat right there. You cannot cheat right here. You cannot cheat across here. You do have to follow the entire path, not stepping off or slowing down in order to successfully retrieve the obsidian block. Additionally, in order to do so in effective time, you do have to cut corners, but not cut corners like this. You have to kind of curve your turns, but not to such a degree that you're pressing all these pressure plates at once, because the way this is working is not actually detecting whether you're standing on the path, it's detecting if you're moving at a good pace along the path. There's observer blocks beneath these pressure plates. Um, and as long as those observer blocks are continuously being activated, then the redstone con uh, continues to receive its signal and keeps the command block from killing the obsidian block that spawns here. Um, so if you press two pressure plates at once, such as right here, that's not going to be enough. You're going to have to do one at a time very quickly. But um, if you if you do them both at the same time or all three at the same time or something like that, um, it's going to kill the block. So it takes a lot of skill, a lot of practice um, to kind of curve your runs. 
Additionally, um, as another important note, if you do have to restart any time um, early on, such as like right here, and you realize, oh, it's hidden block gone, restart. Make sure that this redstone repeater is all the way off. The redstone has reached that signal all the way. Because, for example, if I click this button here, and I go along here, and I realize, oh gosh, I'm done. I go back over here and press the button again right away. As soon as I press that button, this repeater clock has run out and it's going to kill the obsidian before I even begun. So you do want to make sure that the obsidian or the repeater block repeater clock has run out all the way before you start your next attempt um, or else it's not even going to be like an actual attempt. Oh, see I messed that one up. I must be stepping off just slightly somewhere around here. Um, I'll probably cut out after let's say this next attempt um, until I get the the obsidian block. See, you missed it probably right around there. Um, so I will see you after, or during the attempt that I succeed. Okay, there it is. So, um, that actually took me a very long time. It's probably the most attempts I've ever had to, to take to to do this puzzle but it just it really takes lots of persistence trying to shave off as many ticks as you can cut the right corners at just the right points um it, it takes some doing it takes a lot of of persistence and i recognize that that itself is very frustrating um but honestly this is the hardest puzzle here um and therefore also the most rewarding when you finish it um, I'm going to go ahead and hold on to this obsidian for later, so we will move on to the second puzzle across the way. So this is the water puzzle, as I call it. Um, when you enter, you are informed that your goal here is to use the four levers around the room to turn these three faucets in this side room on. Um, the whole purpose of uh, this room, or the whole mechanic, is the use of water. Um, so right now there's only one water faucet that is active, so that is the one that you use um, to access the parkour. There isn't really much of a puzzle here, although it creates the illusion of one. Um, these levers turn on different faucets, so this lever turned on that faucet there, as well as this one down here. Um, and I'll explain kind of where the, the puzzle aspect would come in and why it actually isn't that much of a puzzle shortly. But once this faucet turns on, you come up here, use it to access this, and you come over here, and this block falls. Um, the uh, dialogue tells you, oh, sorry, the block fell. Um, do what you can, try to solve the puzzle without that puzzle while we try to, well, or without that lever while we try to figure out what to do. Um, the lever itself is actually useless. That particular lever doesn't do anything. Um, if you were to somehow find a way to get over there, which is largely impossible, um, it would it would do nothing. The entire puzzle is designed to not use that lever. So after that, um, you're told to figure out what to do next. Um, there are two ways to go about this next step. The way that I initially designed it was actually you're supposed to use, use, oop, use the new swimming mechanics to swim through this one block hole in the faucet, travel way up here, and come out this faucet here, and jump on this platform. Um, but it actually, with a little bit of doing, you are able to land on, or kind of use the water to jump up on top of the faucet here, or on the side rather and then just kind of run over here. Either is fine, um, whichever you find easier. Personally, I find the water easier, uh, but if you're able to get up here and do this more power to you, it takes you to the same place. You jump over here, over here. That's a bit of a leap. Um, it can be done, obviously I just did it, um, but don't be like super upset if you fall, because it's, it's pretty rough. And then you jump over here, Ooh. and see, that was a much easier jump. I'm just bad. Um, we're going to come back over here. So see, with a little bit of doing, it can be done. It's just... Ah! See, some people try way too hard to, to do that, and honestly, the, the water is just so much easier. Personally. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'll take the water back up. While you're out in these pipes, you are able to see other parts of the map um, outside of that puzzle, and it is intentional, um, as you'll see later. Um, if you were to swim up the faucets 
uh, either that one right there or the faucets that are in there. Um, similar things, although that one and those two don't go anywhere. Um, nor does this one that just turned on from that lever there. Uh, if you were to scum up these two faucets, they don't go anywhere, they don't do anything, um, the game just tests to see if they are all on, and then uh, releases the obsidian if so. Um, anyway, once that faucet's turned on, this is your now last option, so you can jump up to this platform here, jump over here, over here, and lever. That turns both of these faucets off, as well as both of those faucets off, which you see here, and turns that faucet on. So now, this is where the, the would-be puzzle aspect comes in. That lever, and that lever, turns on that faucet, and that faucet, this lever turns on that faucet, and that faucet, and that lever turns, or toggles both of the other faucets. They're all toggle. That lever toggles those other faucets, and toggles all three of these ones. So you're trying to figure out, okay, well, what combination of levers do I need to turn all of these on? But actually, it isn't that difficult. The real puzzle aspect is, the, is in the parkour and figuring out how to access each lever. Uh, in fact, the implication is supposed to be that because that lever is inaccessible, the puzzle actually ends up being easier, because if you do the first lever again, and then you do the second lever again, that actually solves it. Um, it can be easy to kind of confuse oneself. Um, like, for example, if you go back to the first lever right away, or you turn on that lever, um, and I, I, regardless, there's no special combination if you just repeat the same process. All three pumps end up turned on and the obsidian block drops. Um, for the record, it's not actually get dropping an obsidian block. Same with the speed puzzle. It's blocking, uh, or dropping uh, blocks of diamond. Um, and then it just replaces the diamond with obsidian that can be placed on observers. But before I go and place these obsidian uh, blocks on the portal, we're going to go up to puzzle number three. For interest's sake, all this debris, by the way, um, is it's not just here randomly, it's actually it's supposed to be the debris that is pushed out of the way uh, from these pipes being run. Um, you can see the metal tearing right there and right there. Um, they're breaking through the fittings here, which is what these blocks here are. Um, and then that down there is just more metal wall uh, that the pipes are breaking through. Um, it's just supposed to enhance the experience. You know, things are falling apart, the pipes have pushed through the wall. So if you walk in here, Right as the lights turn off, the obsidian blocks that you're carrying get removed from your inventory. But if you leave again, they are returned to you. Um, the exact number that you had, one or two, um, or even three, uh, get taken and removed each time. So there's no need to worry. The reason it does that is because parts of this room do clear your entire inventory, so you want to make sure that your obsidian is safe. Um, that said, you come in here, the lights turn off, you're told this is a reset button for the room, and you use your survival skills to solve the puzzle and reach the obsidian block up here. Specifically, you mine it. So you use the resources in the room. It's all about resource management, figuring out what you need, what you uh, need to keep, and what you need to craft. So you take this barrel, take these dark oak planks, and the first thing you might think is, okay, got to make some sticks probably, um, because that's what one of the main things you can do with two uh, planks. However, you can't actually use your um, inventory crafting table. To be honest, I don't know why. I've never been able to figure out uh, why that is. It seems to be some kind of bug, which is why a workbench is supplied to you and why you can reset to get those planks back. So if we come over here, we craft some sticks, and it gives us some sticks that can break dark oak logs. Um, the only reason it sticks is because it had to be something, because you need to be able to break dark oak logs, but you can't normally in adventure mode unless you have an item that says so. So, first time you craft sticks, you say, okay, these sticks can break dark oak logs. That's what I'll use. Um, then you craft those logs into planks, and you need to craft a pickaxe as well as a shovel. It does have to be a wooden shovel uh, for later purposes. Um, Go ahead and come over here and you mine some stone. 
When you're mining this cobblestone, um, it is important to make sure that you are staying as far from the corner as you can. You don't want to be trying to mine up while you're in this corner, because if you're over here or too far over, it will turn off tile drops. It'll remove the block's ability to drop uh, their cobblestone. Um, so if you're missing cobblestone, that is why. And you just need to reset the room and make sure you're mining from over here-ish. You don't want to go any further than like right here. If you have 11 cobblestone, then you've done everything right, you have exactly the amount you need. Come over back to the workbench, you can go ahead and craft your furnace, which you'll need for later. It's a furnace that can be placed on cobblestone, so you can place it right there. Um, additionally, you'll go ahead and craft all of these into sticks, and craft yourself a stone pickaxe, because obviously, you're going to need an iron pickaxe at some point to mine up those diamonds you just revealed. To find the iron, just dig up these three sand blocks here with your wooden shovel and mine up the iron ore. At this point, this is where the resource management really comes in because you have to smelt this iron ore and although the wooden pickaxe can break a coal ore, there is no coal ore in the room. There is no coal ore out in the rest of the map. Everything you need is here. You just need to realize that you don't need the wooden pickaxe anymore, nor do you need the wooden shovel. However, you are going to need some of these sticks. Specifically, you need four sticks because you need to create a iron pickaxe and you need to create a diamond pickaxe to mine up the obsidian block. So you need to keep four sticks, which means the last two sticks that are extra are what you'll use to smelt the last iron ore. That'll give you your third iron ingot. So once this finishes smelting here, we'll go ahead and craft our iron pickaxe. Like so it'll give us an iron pickaxe that is able to break diamond ore. Same deal as with the cobblestone, you want to make sure you're mining from over here, not from the corner, so that the diamonds drop. Otherwise, you'll have to reset the room, and at this point, it would just be a shame. Go ahead and craft yourself a diamond pickaxe. You'll notice that it can only break blocks of diamond, because again, it's giving you a block of diamond, not actual obsidian block, because that would take way too long to actually mine up. However, the uh, diamond block does get replaced from the, with an obsidian block, and um, the uh, what's it? Um, the room takes away the rest of the items that you retrieve from there. Exit the room, get back the obsidian blocks that you just uh, are, uh, that were put down for you when you uh, entered the room, and head down to the portal. Place all three blocks, and you move on into the last stage of the game, where you get this lovely. There is no level 11, there is no level 9 painting. In fact, you can't actually access the elevator to get to level 11 as the dialogue prompt requests of you. There's a water pipe in the way. Um, of note, you are able to fall through this block right here. Um, it will kill you, but your respawn point is set to the portal here now. So it's not that big of a loss, but do keep that in mind if you're trying to explore. This can kill you. Move on out into the maintenance scaffolding area, and you can see the command blocks, you can see some redstone, and you're asked to return to the elevator as you are told that this was all a lie. You'll note that you can, of course, as I said, see the command blocks, and that is intentional. Um, level 10 does not use any functions. It is specifically designed um, to use authentic command blocks so that when you get back here, you can see them, um, just to kind of increase the immersion. So behind this painting, um, if you want to break it, you can. You can see that some of the blocks uh, have now been replaced with glass, and you can see that you've been being watched um, from outside of the game through all of this time. If you continue along the maintenance scaffolding, you'll see more redstone, uh, specifically the redstone for the speed puzzle, which again, you'll now have glass to look into, as well as this lovely Where Is He painting. You're also asked to return to the elevator, but if you continue to the maintenance uh, scaffolding, you'll be taken to the shaft for the elevator from earlier, the elevator that took you here, and told that that's not the elevator that the dialogue person meant. If you take this ladder up, it'll take you to the top of the elevator shaft, where there's some cool kind of plot-based dialogue, but there's not anything else up there, so there's no reason to head up that way. You get some glass into the elevator shaft and go around the corner here where you get your first glimpse of the pipes are clean, uh, which specifically refers to the fact that the pipes are pristine. They, um, have, like I said earlier, have been uh, added in afterward. They damaged this rusted 
uh, decaying game. They were added in after it was created. They are clean. You come in here, take a look down at the water puzzle, and reasonably appear to be stuck. Um, this pipe has been added in again after the game was initially created and has destroyed some of the maintenance scaffolding as a result. You can't proceed that direction. However, if you jump up on here, onto this wall, and over to this damaged wall here, you get a dialogue prompt that says, hey, don't jump off the scaffolding, it's dangerous up here, which of course means continue to jump off the scaffolding and go along this dangerous route. Um, you can't actually jump over here, there are barrier blocks here. If you attempt to, though, uh, it won't kill you. Um, if you head down here, you are able to jump back along this direction to return uh, back over this way. However, if you jump this direction, that is actually where you are guided to go, or, or sort of directed um, by the design of the map. It'll take you back into this main chamber. If you jump over here and over here, there's some more damage in the wall to take you back down where you're supposed to be. You are probably able to explore um, along more of the rim, but there's nothing over there. This is the direction you're supposed to go. Just straight forward, back down here, into the same room you were, but on the opposite side of this damaged metal. Moving onward, this direction, the only direction now you're able to go since you can't actually get up here, there's barrier blocks in your way, you return to the maintenance scaffolding. If you continue along this way, being prompted with the question, where is he, um, you'll be given some more dialogue as you look into the survival puzzle. However, there's nothing else this direction. If you continue on even further, you'll find yourself at the staircase back down to where you started, the maintenance scaffolding, but there's a pipe in your way. You can't go that direction. Um, same pipe that was blocking you earlier. There's, however, no reason to go that way. If you come back this direction, you'll notice way over there that there's something going on over there, some, some wool and some redstone that appears to be going that direction. So if you come back over here, you may notice that there's some blue wire down here. If you jump down right here, you can follow the blue wire, pass through this hole, you'll get even more dialogue that says, hey, don't climb on these uh, wires, they're not made for that, which of course means continue to climb along the wires, jump across over to the purple, and continue on this direction. If you climb up these stairs of wool and redstone, you'll come across these XOR gates that are completely useless. Um, they do, however, block your path. You can't continue that direction. You can jump down here, though. At which point you'll be given one last dialogue prompt that says, Hey, don't ride on this minecart here that's obviously right in front of you. Which of course means, please, go ahead and ride on the minecart. Before I jump in there, this is where the final boss battle takes place. Um, the final kind of puzzle event of the game. Um, so before we go in, it is a little hectic, a little loud, um, and requires a little bit of focus. So I'll explain kind of what's happening before I jump in, um, and then guide you through each particular step. You'll be taken into a room with a huge supercomputer, which will just kind of be generally evil at you. Um, and he'll be surrounded by some minecart tracks. And you'll be riding along those minecart tracks, basically in a circle around it. Um, if you miss any of the buttons that are uh, on wires dangling over your head, you will be damaged. If you press those buttons, you will get a brief uh, stint of regeneration and be taken behind the server towers. There are six of them um, encircling the ring of minecart rails. Behind the server towers, there's some guardians that you need to smack and kill. If you kill all six of them, then you uh, win the game. Um, that said, if you do exit the minecart, let's go ahead and enter right now. If you exit the minecart, you die. You are required to be in the minecart for this boss battle. Um, it, it would just be, it wouldn't be a boss battle otherwise. So let's go ahead, oops, see, so I missed that button, so I got damaged, and I missed that button too, so I'm dead. However, your respawn point is back here. So it's not that big of a loss. You just jump back in and proceed. So let's try and get that first button. Oh, missed it. Let's try to get this second one. There we go. So you press the button as you're going, kill the guardian, and continue. Oh, I got that green one. I thought I missed it. There we go. So you go behind the servers, kill the guardians, 
Some buttons are easier than others. Some buttons are easier after you have successfully done the button prior to it, such as that green one. Uh, this pink one is actually a little bit harder if you did the red button first. Um, what's important to note here is no matter where you are, no matter um, at what point, if you die by any means, whether it's by the game or by jumping out of the minecart, um, your progress is safe. All the servers that you've already destroyed will, all, will still be dead. However, it is important to go behind those servers that you've completed anyway um, on uh, extra attempts because otherwise you'll take damage and that just isn't necessary, especially if one of the last few uh, servers is one of the ones that you have left to kill. I think this red one is my last one. The red one's probably the second hardest next to the pink one just because, oh, yep, see, I missed it. It's a little tricky to get to. But you see, so now I've taken some damage there, and I have all the servers except the red, but I'm going to try to press the... Oh, well, I died. But you'd want to try to press those buttons anyway so you can stay alive. Um, otherwise, it's just a pain, especially since the red one is last, so I can't skip any of these front buttons, or I'll die before I even get the chance to make an attempt uh, to destroy that last server. I think I got the green one. Yes, and I'm pretty sure... I got this one, but it is slightly easier. Oh, nope, that turned me around. I think that kills me. Um, that's okay, though. That is, I mean, that's not a bug. It's not like a major uh, inconvenience. Uh, well, not inconvenience, obviously it is. It'll kill you. Um, but it doesn't uh, break anything. It will just have to make you uh, restart the battle if it kills you. Um, but that's okay. So, okay, here we go. We're going to get this red one this time. I found the best way to get this red one in particular is kind of just face this direction and kind of, oh, nope, nope, that was bad, um, wiggle all around a little bit, uh, because otherwise you don't know whether you're going to be closest when you're higher or lower than it. Um, so it can take a few tries to get some of these. Um, the purple one, uh, if you're not ready for it, can be easy to miss. Um, the uh, warp stem one can be pretty easy to miss if you aren't ready. Um, the pink one, the server, the guardian itself isn't hard to kill, um, but hitting that pink button can sometimes be a pain. I'm surprised I got it on my first or second attempt there. Um, usually that's the one that I get stuck on. Oh, there we go. So if you kill all six servers, explosions occur all around the main computer, but go ahead and stay on the minecart because it's going to take you to the end of the game. Now the minecart, ra or the rail system has changed slightly. It takes you down this way to the very end of the game where I thank you for playing and ask you for all kinds of stuff. So that is um, level 10. That's the walkthrough. That's all you need to do to solve each puzzle um, to get to the final boss battle and then to beat the final boss battle. Um, I hope that this helped you with whatever you were stuck on and I hope you enjoyed the map regardless of whether you were stuck or not. Um, and I look forward to seeing your playthrough of level 10. Thank you so much.